Good morning, y'all. It's Lippy with Gemini Homestead. Look what I just got out of the garden. I've got some squash. These are crook neck, straight neck, and I also have zucchini. And we're going to prep this for the freezer. Normally, when they first start coming in, they're very sporadic. They are now starting to ramp up. So usually I take the first two cuttings and then I prepare them, bread them, and so when we want fried squash or fried zucchini, it is already ready. So here in this bowl, I think I've got eight, eight to nine, um, and they're good sized pieces. They're about, what, a quarter of an inch, okay? So all I've done is slice them. Now I'm going to bring the camera around. This is three steps, but let me tell you, it's worth it. You're not spending a lot of time doing this. It's just... A lot of time in between the steps. So I'm going to get the camera turned around. I'm going to show you how I get these breaded and ready for the freezer. Okay, what you're going to need is a large pot with boiling water. It is at a rapid boil. You may not be able to see for the camera, but it is. Do not add any salt. The reason why we're about to blanch these is to deactivate the en enzymes. What that means, it's going to hold its texture, it's going to hold its color. Um, if you didn't do this first, your squash would be mushy. Because then it sits in the air. If I added salt, it would activate the enzymes. So, I've got my water boiling. And over here is a bucket of ice water. Very, very cold ice water. And then a strainer. Now, you can use whatever. You can use a... A large spoon, it's got the drain holes, I prefer this. So I'm going to do it in batches because you don't want to overcrowd, okay? Now, at, it's at, at a boil, so I'm going to start dropping them in. And of course, that's going to um, cause the water to cool down. And this is good for the first batch. All right. Once it comes back up to a bowl, you need to time it for one minute. Um, I believe there's some uh, books out there that'll tell you bowl for three minutes. But what I have found over the years is that three minutes is included when you first drop it in. It takes a good minute and a half uh, to bring that water back to a bowl. So then I'm going to go ahead and then blanch it for a solid minute once it comes back up to a bowl. That's going to give you your adequate time. Um, and I actually did some research this morning. Just say, you know, is there something else out there that explains it? I found out the hard way many years ago. I said, you know, this three minute mark is really messing people up. Um, because they're timing it three minutes after it comes up to a bowl. And that's not the case. Once it comes to a bowl, one minute and you're done. And so that's all I'm going to do. And then as soon as that marks up, we're going to set it over into the ice bath and just leave it. And we're going to continuously do the batches until we're done and they'll be sitting in the ice bath. Okay, like I said, I did reserve one yellow squash. All I did was wash the squash first without cutting it. Take it from the garden, wash it. Pat it dry, slice it. Now you're going to see there's no liquid here. But now we want to activate the enzyme. So what you're trying to do is bring the moisture out. Okay? And all I'm going to do is take a little bit of salt. This is where you can use Himalayan. Um, this is just uh, sea salt. That's all it is. I don't use any iodized salt. And I'm just going to let that sit in this bowl. In about five minutes, you're going to see the amount of liquid in here. And so that's going to be our wet squash to get ready for our breading. Now, this came out of the freezer, okay? What I do is I'll mix up three cups of cornmeal. Now, that's not a cornbread mix. This is straight cornmeal that doesn't have the uh, baking powder, the salt, nothing like that. I do three cups of cornmeal and one cup of all-purpose flour. 
And then that's when I add my salt, pepper, garlic powder, any seasoning you want. But this is when you add it. I mix it up and I set it in the freezer. This was mixed March of this year. So I've really got enough to probably do all of this and then another handful. Just throw it back in the freezer. It only It's only for vegetables. It says breading frying mix. So that tells me this is the breading for my okra, squash, whatever it is that we're gonna fry vegetables. I've already got it pre-mixed. So we're gonna let this sit. It's already starting, but I'm gonna bring the camera down because I want you to see how wet it is. Now remember, there's no water going in here. We're using the natural enzymes from this squash. Y'all, yeah, I don't know if this camera's gonna pick up on it, but can you see that glisten? And it literally drips. It's been about five minutes, and now I'm ready to get them in the batter, or should I say the cornmeal and flour mixture and fry them up, and I'm going to show you how I actually fry them, but look at that. All right, I'm going to leave the stove set on a number four. So that's on the low end of medium. And I'm just going to set these in there. See, they coat so well. I'm making a mess. Now I'm going to have to turn it down to three. If it kind of wants to pop, decrease your temp. And I don't have an apron on. And this, this will hold this one little batch for us. And like I said, my seasoning is already seasoned. Um, but afterwards, if you like a little bit more salt, that's when you would add the salt as soon as they come out of this oil. But I'm going to bring the camera over because you're going to get a better visual of exactly how much oil I have in this little skillet, which is not much. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You can use tongs, uh, spatula, but y'all, two dinner forks, and you just take them and you use them both together and just lightly flip. That's the easiest instruments to use when frying squash. Okay, there you go. And this is a great example right here. Okay? Now, if I would have it covering, you wouldn't see that cornmeal and flour mixture. Now, timing it, you really want to cook it a good four minutes on each side, but monitor your temp. You want to add a steady fry, not a hard fry. Okay, we're ready to flip them. I was washing dishes and I almost got them a little bit too brown. But thank goodness this is for me and Papa. See on this one side? So they went five minutes. They should have went about three and a half or four. But boy, if y'all could smell these, oh my. And you see, it's still at a steady. There they are in their glory. Now I do like to drain mine just on a rack. Uh, you can use paper towels, but I find that it makes it soggy. This way... They're very crisp. I don't know if you can hear that. They're very crisp. Here we go. Oh my. Mmm. This could be my lunch, y'all. But we got to get those out of the freezer. Go to the final step. And then we won't see them for another 12 hours. So, I'm going to go get them out of the freezer. We got them out of the freezer. Now, all I'm doing is scooping them up. You can use your hands. But I lightly loosen them with a spatula. And I'm just dumping them into my dry mix. And they will go back on the cookie sheet that I took them off of. And then we're going to let them sit 12 hours. You can go up to 24, but I, 12 hours is, to me, the, the sweet spot. And then all you do is remove them, put them in your freezer bag, 
and they're ready to go. Put them back in the freezer and they're ready when you're ready to fry some squash or zucchini. And I do like to get the air out. And then all I'm going to do is coat them very, very well. And like I said, I'm going to put them back on the cookie sheet. Now, I still have enough of cornmeal, so I'll be fine. Now, you can do this on a silicone mat. They work, it works just, just as well. I just didn't want to pull mine out there again. I'm saving on the washing. So, I'm going to line them back out. They're nicely coated. Now, don't shake the coating off. Uh, just pull them out. Now, if some of them didn't get coated, you need to reshake them. So, I'm going to line these up. And when I get through, I'll bring you back, show you what, what they actually look like with the coating. Going into the freezer 12 hours into a gallon size bag or quart size bag. Just don't overcrowd. And you've got fried squash at any given time. You know, and you get to choose the amount that you need. So, I'll bring you back when I get all of these breaded. We ready for the freezer. They're nicely coated. Yeah, this is going to be good. I hope this helped y'all. I hope you tried. Uh, some of you that still work outside the home, you know, this is one way um, to get a quick side on the table. I was late coming back. Of course, y'all wouldn't know that, you know, because it's a video. But I was late coming back because I had to sit down and enjoy my lunch. Now I've got my cup of coffee. So, hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time, God bless you all.